Welcome to In The Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome back, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. I'm really excited to have on today's show Chris Gogan, who is the creator of Simplifying Business Growth. And you can find his work at chrisgogan.com. And today we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of business and business growth, the things that I think, well, Chris and I, I think both uh, recognize and see that there's just a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of people who don't embrace the fundamentals of business and um, end up hurting themselves and their business in the process. We're going to go over what those fundamentals are, how we can implement them, and we'll just see where the rest of this takes us. So Chris, thank you for being in the trenches. Oh, my pleasure, Tom. And, and I love the name of it, uh, In the yeah. Trenches. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, a, a kind of a throwback to my military days a little bit, but I also think business is a lot like that too. You know, it, it is. And that's where I spend, I've spent all my time as I sp- in the trenches with, uh, with clients. That's awesome. So what I want to talk about is just that, like the idea of like these fundamentals of business. So you work with clients, maybe you can give us just a brief background of, of how you work with clients, like what, what that entails, kind of your, your expertise in that. And then we can talk about some of the things that you typically see again and again when you're doing client-based work and, and helping people with their business growth. Okay. And feel free to you know, ask any questions as we go along. So how I work with, with clients is I, I've, I've had primarily a consulting business for, for years where I'll do consulting and then implementation work mm-hmm. with clients. And I've, I've done this and I've worked in over a hundred different industries. I've worked with hundreds of clients and uh, typically they, they come to me because they're in some sort of a mess and they just can't get out of it. They can't figure out how to get out. You know, they're at point A, wherever that is, and they want to get to point B, wherever that is. And they've, they've typically tried a lot of different things and it hasn't gotten the results that they wanted. Also, most of my clients, they've, I'll call it invested about $25,000 on the low end in their marketing education. I say that a little bit tongue in cheek because that mm. investment is usually involved hiring a consultant or an agency or someone mm. that's promised the moon and delivered garbage. So it's, it's not good from a financial standpoint. I actually had one, one guy who spent over a million dollars on his uh, marketing education. So people you know, I work with, they, they've usually been bloodied up a little bit which is good because they become skeptics. And I like working with honest skeptics, people that you know, maybe don't believe everything, but they want to believe and they're willing to do the due diligence to look into stuff. They can't get to their goal, no matter what they did, they, they can't get there. So I go and I work with them and I uh, uncover what, where the greatest uh, opportunities are. We lay out a, uh, a plan together mm-hmm. and then we roll out and implement the plan. Everything is to scale their business and scaled growth. As a so, so do me a favor if you can, sure. give, me, give me an example. Don't obviously, you don't have to name names or anything like that, but give me like an example of, of something where that, that occurs. I'm sure there's probably a, a bunch of different challenges every time you take out a new client, do something like this, but where does it begin for you? Like where does that planning or, or that research begin? So it begins before I do anything with them because people want to know, it's like, oh, hey, what can we do? What should, what should we do? And my answer is like, I have no idea. I can't go in and prescribe anything without first understanding like what's going on with them. This is on the consulting side of things. So for instance, I had a client who came to me. He had written like nine or 10 New York Times bestsellers and they were doing everything. I mean, everything. They're doing everything. And they had every like latest bell and whistle you could possibly imagine. They had a you know, very enthusiastic team. They had, had, had everything. They weren't getting the where they wanted to go. That they weren't hitting the sales numbers that they wanted. So I, I went in and I, I reviewed all the things that they're doing, and I uncovered like one fundamental piece that they're missing. One simple little thing I found, and what I did is I wrote one email campaign form, number of email, you know, a few emails in there, not many, but one email campaign. Wrote that, we rolled that out, deployed that, and it doubled their sales on one of the primary products. You know, they, they said to me, so Chris, you know, it's like, you know, you're actually the first guy that we've, we've hired that we can remember we've got a positive ROI off of. It's like they were amazed. But for me, it's, it's not 
and I don't want this to ever sound like how great Chris is or anything like that, because if you know Chris, Chris is, isn't that great. Chris has just been very fortunate to have learned a lot of things over the years. Every single business I've ever gone in is missing certain fundamentals that if they grasped these and took hold of them, their business would, would uh, grow and they'd be able to scale it in ways that, you know, that they couldn't even imagine. Sure. So t- and, take us through that if you could. I'd be really curious about what these fundamentals are. Well, it's understanding the whole client acquisition system. Now, a good friend of mine and private client, Michael Gerber, he wrote this incredible book called The E-Myth Revisited. And if you haven't got that or anyone listened to this, I highly recommend reading that if you haven't read that. In, in there, he talks about you know, what happens with most people is they have an entrepreneurial seizure meaning they're working for somebody else and then they decided to go off in business for themselves. You know, guys repairing computers and he gets paid, you know, 30 bucks an hour, but he's billing the client 200 bucks an hour. And he scratches his head and says, hey, this money's going somewhere and it's not to me. So when I go off and I do it on my own. And so he goes off and he does it on, on his own. And same thing with, with a lawyer or, you know, an accountant or, or a graphic artist or a designer or a writer. You know, same thing. They just get this flash, hey, why don't I do this on my own? And they go off and they do that, and they're, re- they're really good at the deliverable of it, delivering the, the product. But what they don't know is they don't know all the business things needed. So they don't understand you know, the financials. They don't understand the accounting. They don't understand like, you know, people side of stuff. And even more fundamentally and more important, especially initially, is they don't understand how to get clients and how to not just get clients, but get clients that are good clients that will pay them, will pay them on time and will respect the work they do and appreciate them and the value that they bring to their organization. And so they don't understand the client acquisition side of things. So what happens is, is they, they go online and looking around and, and then they, they start getting, hearing all these things about traffic, traffic, traffic. And one of the biggest problems I ever see is people are focusing on traffic. I believe in traffic and traffic is a vital part of, of everything I do with clients it's not the primary place to focus and, and to start. Okay, so break this down. Like, and, and I don't know if there's a way to, to make it more checklist oriented or more granular, but I, I want to be able, if I'm listening to this, say, okay, these are the things I need to look at in my own business. Like if I want to do some, some of my own analysis of where I stand and my business stands, what are the things that I need to do? So I'm still not quite clear on what the, what the fundamentals are. Can you, t- can you take us through that and say, like, these are the things you need to check on and then typical ways that they're broken and the typical ways you can, you can solve them? Sure. So the, the first fundamental is, and I'll, I'll reference um, Michael Gerber again in his uh, latest book, Beyond the E-Myth. He, you know, he, he talks about a three-legged stool. And if I was uh, in front of you, I would be pushing my index finger, my middle finger, my thumb on the table to make it look like a, a three-legged stool pushing down on it. And so the three legs of the stool are uh, lead generation, lead conversion, and client fulfillment. And so the most fundamental piece is a client fulfillment. You have to be delivering a five-star experience to your clients because this is where your repeat business is going to come from. This is where your referrals are going to come from. And so first and foremost, you got to be delivering a great product or service that, that people are, are enjoying and, and loving. That is your, your long-term growth. And that is what makes all the rest of the marketing work. So first and foremost, you got to have that. If you don't have that, work on that and get it so, so the experience is, is, is fantastic. And also too, as I go through these, these fundamentals, understand that you're continuously revisiting them and continuously asking yourself, how can we get better? How can we get better? How can we get better? I tell my clients, it's like, okay, you're two years away from being out of business. You're two ways away from having somebody knock you out of the marketplace. I don't care how big you are. If you were going to knock yourself out of business, what would you do to knock yourself out of business? And so they're continuously asking themselves and continuously revisiting you know, those three things, lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. So the client fulfillment is, is uh, most important. You have to deliver a great experience. And then it's to the client acquisition side. And the client acquisition is lead generation and lead conversion. You got to get leads and you got to close leads. And those leads got to turn into like profitable sales for you. Like I said, most people, what they do is they focus on on lead generation, on traffic. How can I get more traffic? You know, how can I get cheap clicks? And you definitely want to focus on that, but that's not the whole equation. That's only part of it. You got to be able to convert the leads. So they have to be Mm -hmm. turning into good paying clients. And so what most people do is they'll just buy some traffic program or go on and and just, just, you know, run some ads to, to their website. 
without any, any thought of the uh, lead generation or sorry, lead conversion part. And so what, what, what I like to tell people is picture a greased slide, because that's what we want to build. We want to build a greased slide. And this greased slide is when your prospective clients get on it, it's just a fun ride down the slide form. They come out the bottom, they're happy, their clients are paying, you're happy, they're happy, and it's a wonderful thing. So many times when I look at people's websites, their grease slide is, reminds me of slides that I've been on with, with my kids before. So we go to the park in the middle of summertime and there's this one metal slide I remember, you know, it was probably about, you know, 120 degree slide temperature wise. And, and you go down and about a foot down, you just stop kind of grinding halt and the back of your legs are all bloodied and, and you're not moving. It's like you're stuck. Most people don't give thoughts to their website. And so people hit a lead, they'll go to their website and then they're stuck. Even with, with a so-called funnel in place, the whole sales process, it's usually not built around the right things and, and the right methodology and the right processes to move people along. And mm. they need people that, that, that have people started. And this is a really big thing with anyone that sells a service or professional service is uh, I've been on a uh, slide. There's this one a really fun slide. It was huge, it's like about a three-story slide. And I mean, we're cruising down this thing. Kids are like going down all day. Daddy, daddy, come on it with me. So I go on it with them. and I'm cruising down. I'm having a blast. And about two-thirds of the way down, I hit a seam in the slide. And it's like, ow, like I thought I was like broke my tailbone on or something like that. It's like, that was not fun at all. And that happens in people's businesses where they may have a good website. They're generating a lead. They're getting a phone call or a form filled out. But when they hop on the phone with them, it's just a mess. They have that seam in the grease slide. It's not smooth. It doesn't flow all the way out where it should just be a simple, you know, yes, 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 until they become a client. So that, that whole journey has, has got to be um, thought out and planned. I, I have a graphic that I I'll usually show with people or the process of how we take somebody from one second of interest to becoming you know, a $100,000 a year client. It just starts with progressive time investment from them. So you, you have one second, the ad, which buys you three seconds, which they come to your website. Your website's got to answer questions for them, make them sh that feel that they're in the right, right spot. You've got three seconds to do that. And then once you buy that three seconds, then they're now ready to invest 30 seconds and continue reading more about you or your website and, and how you can help them. And if your copy is good on your website and you're speaking the, the right message, that 30 seconds pulls them in deeper and it buys you five minutes. They'll actually like read your page on your website. They'll poke around all the different pages on your website. And that's one thing clients do is they don't usually just go to one page. They go to uh, multiple pages on website before mm -hmm. their decision. That five minutes, well, then they'll make a decision that, yeah, you know what? I want to continue the conversation. and I want to pick up the phone and have a phone call with them. Or if it's purely online, you know, I'll opt in and get some more information uh, from them or I'll purchase a small product from them. That continues to grow you know, from five minutes to the 15-minute phone call to an hour to becoming a client, to becoming a repeat client, and to begin, become a great uh, referral source. And so most mm -hmm. people, first of all, they just don't understand it. It's no fault of their own. It's just never been explained. And so when we go through and, and explain this whole process, it makes sense. I, I have a client that delivers a, uh, a five-star experience. She boards cats. When people go on vacation, I've never worked with a company like this before. It's just like most of my clients. It's a, she delivers a, a real high-end experience, but when we went through her whole grease slide, it's like the phone wasn't being answered right, which is one of the most important marketing tools and sales tools is that first three seconds on the phone. How do you answer? Well, do, do me a favor, actually, because that's what I'm curious about. I think lead generation is something that I talked about quite a bit on this uh, show, and I do a lot of that myself. And so I feel like a lot of listeners probably have an idea of lead generation. I think the idea yep. of lead conversion and fulfillment, specifically conversion, I'm curious because this obviously is very much focused on client-based businesses, anything where you're having that, that, that phone call. So take me through, because I think this is the core of it in terms of like conversion. Talk me through that process when it comes to the phone call and what needs to happen on that to, to turn a, as somebody who is inquiring into a client. Yeah, so the client fulfillment part is, is what really makes or breaks most people's marketing, especially as competitive as things are right now. You know, a client was telling me that, that he needs to get cheaper leads. It's like, well, help me understand. What do you, what do you mean by cheaper leads? He says, well, my leads are five bucks a lead right now, and I need to get it down to like two or three bucks. For what he sells, and he sells chiropractic services, it's like, seriously, five bucks a lead, you should be killing it. 
you should absolutely be killing it. There, sh there should be no concern at all. The focus is just lead generation, but no, no, you got you to convert those leads. So I've done a lot of work with professional service companies, you know, anyone from just like a small guy to you know, clients at one of the top uh, law firms in the country that they deal with uh, decimillionaires only. So the most important part is how you answer the phone. That's your, your, first, your first connection with them. I know this is, might sound like basic and fundamental and cheesy, and that's okay, but you got to put a smile on your face when you answer the phone. And then depends on, on what you're selling. It has to be congruous with, with what, what you're all about, what your product is all about, what your brand is all about. Like, like this uh, client who they do cat boarding. People go on vacation, they need someplace to put their cat, they don't want to put them in kitty prison. And so when they answer, answer the phone, they, they would just say, you know, hi, feline wishes, how can we help you? And, and they would just go into mechanical. People would ask questions, they'd answer a question. Prospect would ask questions, they'd answer a question back and forth like that. And so we changed, you know, how they answered the phone to just the, the first one is, hello, uh, feline wishes, where we make uh, kitty's dreams come true. How, how may we help you? You know, so, so right there, it's just like, it's just, you know, it can sound cheesy or not, but it's like, it's just something a little bit different. And then they would ask a question and most people, they don't orchestrate the sales conversation. So the sales conversation is just question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, cross my fingers, hope, hope they're going to buy. Mm -hmm. um, instead, what you do is this, this scene in Cars, the movie. I've watched that movie several thousand times, I think, because <laughs> my, my boys have uh, really liked that one. Anyhow, there's a scene where or Lightning McQueen is going in to get a new set of tires. And he goes in and he's like, he's like all right, Luigi, give me the best black wall uh, tires that, that, that I can get. And Luigi is like, no, you don't know what you want. Luigi knows what you want. And then he, he goes in and uh, fits them up with uh, some beautiful white wall tires. But the big part of that scene is when he goes, no, you don't know what you want. Luigi knows what you want. So most clients that come to me for my business, they don't know what they want. They think they know what they want, which is more leads and then growth. But what they really want is they need a whole turnkey client acquisition system that works together. And so I'll answer their question, but I'll direct the whole sales conversation in the direction where I want it to go, where it should go, where it needs to go in order for them to understand, to learn what they don't know. Yeah. So, okay. So Chris, do me a favor if you can, because this is, I'm, I'm fascinated by this. How do you orchestrate the conversation? Are there particular like tactics or strategies or, or specific things you do to orchestrate the conversation, especially if somebody comes to you saying, this is what I, I, I like. And I get, I get this a lot too. Most people come to me or referrals, which is nice. Yep. But then sometimes that referral, I think, you know, there's, there's obviously communication breakdown a little bit because somebody might be inquiring like about a specific aspect of like some of the work I did. And that's like only maybe a small element of it, right? And it's not like the core focus of what I do. So I typically do have to like kind of explain like, yeah, this is, this is the broader work that we do. So I'm really curious, how do we orchestrate a conversation either one, if somebody's coming off saying, yeah, this is what I want. I want the black tires or whatever. And then, or I want this specific thing that you do. How do you shift that conversation or how you lead it the right way to actually get it to where it makes more sense for you to sell whatever it is that you're selling? That's a great question, Tom. And I'll answer that more specifically for what I do. Because how you handle things will be different based off of... Sure, a uh, lot of different factors. Yeah, exactly. And when people are listening to this, you know, understand that how you handle things, the words that you say will be different. The principle, the yeah. principle is though, is that you want to direct them. You've got a very clear next step that you want to take them to. And I believe in having things very conversational. I don't like tight, you know, selling conversations, although all my conversations are selling conversations. And when I define selling, it's just helping people, helping people make a decision mm -hmm. to do something that's going to benefit them. Mm -hmm. um, and this isn't something I just dreamed up. This is, I, I've made over 100,000 cold calls and phone calls in my life, an, an actual number. I've had several thousand meetings one-on-one -on -one with business owners, and I've been very blessed and fortunate to work with a lot of uh, industry leaders where I've been able to understand and see different things that they're doing. And so kind of like apply and aggregate, and make this, you know, this wonderful like system, and then to make it very simple and turnkey and make it flow. When somebody comes to me, they're not at the level that they want to be at sales-wise. And so they're like, we need more business and we need to get more leads. That's almost 100% of, of the time. So we, we, we just talk about that. You know, so tell me you know, what's going on. I just ask them about their situation. What are you doing? What's your goal? What are you looking to accomplish? And then we just talk about that. I just let them just say whatever, you know, whatever's on their mind. And then it's like, okay, well, well you know, help me understand 
where are you going? Like, what's your, your goal for your business and what's your vision? And, you know, a lot of times they think that they're clear on things, but when you actually ask them, they're not. It's, it's usually like an ambiguous. Um, and so we talk about that. We talk about, you know, the, their vision, like where they want to go. So if they're doing, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars in sales, it's like, you know, I, I'd really like to get this to a million dollars. It's like, okay, great. Why a million dollars? What will that do for you? You know, or if this is somebody who's just getting started, they, you know, maybe a hundred thousand dollars. What? Help me understand. Why is that important to you? What do you want? Same thing, if they're a million, maybe they want to get to 10 million. It was, it's the same conversation. So what are some of the things that you've done? What have you tried? What's worked? Well, what hasn't worked? And then I ask them, so what's the problem? And they're like, well, we need more leads. And then I'll relate some stories back, you know, you know, to them. And I said, well, what's your plan to get more leads? And they're like, well, we don't have one. That's why we're talking with you. So I said, so, so really the problem is, and, and this, this, is, this is one question that almost anybody can put in their business where it completely turns a conversation around, where it puts you in a position of authority and someone who can really help them. And understand that it's not to put yourself in a position of authority. That's not the intent. The intent's to help people. And so, you know, the question I always ask them at this point, it's like, so what's your plan? They're like, well, we don't have one. You know, or they'll they'll give me something that's not a plan. They just spew a bunch of stuff because they don't want to look dumb. So really, I said, so what I'm hearing you say is you don't have a plan that you have confidence in. Is that accurate? They're like, yep. So I said, so the real problem is you don't have a plan that you have confidence in. And they say, yes. If they say anything other than the yes, then we keep talking about it. And then I come back and ask them the question again, because that's always the problem. That's always, 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 always a problem is they don't have a plan that they have confidence in. If they did, they wouldn't, mm. be, they wouldn't be contacting me. They wouldn't be talking to me. They wouldn't be phoning me. They wouldn't be listening to me. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. Chris, if you don't mind, let's hone in on this thing right here. This is super important. And it, I don't know, I think I take it for granted, but I don't know anybody who's like kind of specifically identified this specific, this, this thing, especially in the context like phone sales or consulting or things like that. But like if somebody's having a conversation with you, they're only having the conversation because they're not sure about something. If they were sure, like you just said, they would just purchase. Like they would just go and say, hey, where do I put my money? I'm ready to purchase. They wouldn't need the conversation, whether it's for the, you know, the kitty daycare or whatever it is, or whether it's for higher end consulting. If somebody knew exactly what it was, then the sale would basically be made. So if you're having the conversation, and tell me if I'm, I'm, I'm misinterpreting this or if I generally have it correct, if you're having the conversation, then typically what you're going to find is that person is having difficulty in knowing exactly what their plan is and knowing exactly what next steps are. Yeah, they don't have a plan and they don't know what to do. Because I tell you, nobody from the hundreds and hundreds of clients that I've worked with, nobody has wanted, has wanted to hire me for the sake of hiring me. Nobody. They would rather do it themselves or, you know, for free or have somebody do it for them for free. Nobody wants to spend money on, on marketing or consulting or no one wants to spend money on, on leads. No, nobody. I'd rather spend money on, you know, new hockey equipment or, or you know, or taking trips or, you know, letting my, you know, sending my wife on shopping sprees. So the only reason, it doesn't matter what you sell, you know, and I've, I've done this with some very successful people in the health space and financial services space, uh, weight loss space, in, in food space, on and on and on. Designers, uh, graphic designers, I've had this work very well for them because uh, hundreds of others or tens of others or however many you've done it with, I'm confident we can help you. I need, I need to know some more things first. So now it elevates you and it puts them in a position where they're like, I don't know what I need. You know, you sounds like you do. Now you're different because nobody is selling like this. Nobody is having conversations with people like this. All people are doing is like, you know, hey, I get you a good deal. This is what you need. They pitch them what they need without first understanding what the problem is. And the problem is, you know, in this case, they don't have a plan that they have confidence in. So now they're ready to listen and they're ready, more importantly, they're ready to listen to your solution to the problem. So what I'd love to do here is do a quick summary of kind of like what I captured as like of the process when you get on one of these phone calls. Obviously, there's a lot of different uh, variables here, you know, so I'm not going to get into that. That's taken for granted. But typically, it's, uh, you know, starting answering with a smile. So, okay, common sense, but maybe not common practice. So I think that's, that's important and then engaging. So the key points I got, answer with a smile. Then when you get into it, you know, being conversational. So that's what I like to do. And I think that's probably really appropriate for, for definitely like higher ticket sales and stuff like that, depending on the context. But then I like this, orchestrate the conversation, have a next step you want to get this person to, or you want to direct them to. And then you kind of went through this flow, like basically with, with this part of inquiry, you went, you know, what's going on? What's your goal? What are you looking to accomplish? And, and one of the main questions you asked was, what's the goal of your business? What's the vision? Because then people are going to have to start to explain that. And they'll say something like, oh, I want a million bucks or whatever it is, whatever the big thing is. 
And then you follow it up. Well, what have you tried? What's worked? What hasn't worked? So what's the problem, right? So you start with, you know, what is the vision? What is the goal? Then you basically get into asking them, like, what is the problem? And letting them explain that. Then asking them, well, what's their plan to solve that problem? And that's typically by that point, like through, through this, this process of questioning and question and answer, by then chances are that's where you're going to discover that the person is, doesn't really have a plan that they're confident in. And that's probably why this conversation is taking place in almost any kind of phone sale. That's absolutely why, 100% why the conversation is taking place. Yep. And then from there, and I love this. So then this, you, this is where you start to do the transition is basically saying, so the real problem is X. You, you, know, you need a marketing plan. The real problem is X. You want to feel confident in that your cat is going to be taken care of, right? Something like that, that like, I don't know, whatever it is for these other, other types of companies. And then if they say yes, and then, or then you ask, so do you want that? Like, do you want, like the problem is a marketing plan. Do you want one? And then you, that's when you do that transition and that's when they're going to say yes. So did I kind of capture that? And then what happens after they say yes in that, that capacity? So after they say yes, that capacity, they're, they're now looking to you. It's like, okay, well, what do I do? They've identified as you because you're different that no one's talked to them like this before. You're, you're now the expert in their eyes. So what, what do I do is, is what they're looking for in my business. And, and this, 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 is where, this is where it branches off, depends on what you're selling. The principle is still the same. It's okay. Well, you know, would you like to have a plan to do that? Okay. Yes. So in my business, this is on the consulting side of, of things. This is what you're transitioning into is like, okay, well, I've had many, many companies, all different industries, you know, come to us, similar situations. And what I found is, is that they got problems in their business and they've got opportunities in their business. And if they have a reasonably good website and selling system, I can usually identify 20 to 30 things that help increase their traffic, their pull through and their conversions. But I'm not looking for problems. What I'm doing is I'm looking for the opportunities. I'm looking for the top three or four opportunities. And I call these your AOHOs, your areas of highest opportunities. Every business has these. Once we identify these three or four things, and once we focus on these three or four things, then you can grow your business pretty much to any level that, that, that you want. And what I found is that a company that's already successful, this is you know, companies that are selling a you know, million to $40 million in that range. When they focus on these, they can typically add about 25% sales you know, in, in their first year and it'll lay the foundation for significant growth beyond that. If it's a smaller business, they can you know, typically 2X to 10X their, their business. And this is based off of, like I said, working with hundreds and hundreds of companies. So it's really those three or four AOHOs that, that we're looking for. What are these? You know, what, what are the AOHO again? Areas of what? Areas of highest opportunities. Okay, and what's, what are these? Yeah, so, so this is on, uh, on the consulting side. They say, yeah, I, I'd love to know these things. And I say, well, in order for me to, uh, to understand these things, I, I have to do an analysis of, of your business because I need to go inside and look at things. I need to look at your accounts. I need to look at, because if, if I just took off of like what they're doing, like this uh, 10 time New York Times bestseller list, who's, you know, the business was in the tens of millions of dollars. And, and you know, they said, well, we're doing, you know, we're doing AdWords, we're doing Facebook, we're doing social, we're doing email marketing, we're doing e-blast, we're doing retargeting, we're doing remarketing, we're doing, you know, they're doing everything. And if I just take it at that, while well, they're already doing everything, I can't help them. Most people are doing a lot of stuff. They're just not doing it right. They don't have the grease mm-hmm. slide in mind. Mm-hmm. So I tell them, I was like, look, I, I really need to, to go in, discover, you know, where your areas of um, highest opportunities where a, your AOHOs are. And in order to do that, you know, it takes me, you know, whether it's a, a discovery day or it takes me a week to three weeks to, to go in and do a deep dive on it. I can assure you that they're there. Every business has them. There hasn't been one where I, that hasn't had them. And so I'll go in and, and if you allow me to help, you know, I'll, I'll go in and, uh, and, and uncover these for you and show them to you. Perfect. Okay. So this, this is interesting. So that you're not doing that for free, like, right. That's, that's part of the, when you'd start the engagement or, or the contract, right? That's yeah, that's part of the, uh, the engagement. And so my, my engagement, it's, you know, again, grease slide I take them from a simple yes to a simple yes to a simple yes. So I, I take them from a second to three seconds to 30 seconds to five minutes to 15 minutes to an hour, you know, conversation on the phone. Mm-hmm. From this, we go to an initial, an initial engagement and I don't charge them a lot of money for the initial engagement. Mm-hmm. For the market I serve, they're like, oh, that's, it's nothing. Like even, even, if you, even if you come up with nothing, it's still nothing. Mm-hmm. It's like dollar investment is nothing. So I do that, the initial engagement and then we review it together. Why do that engagement? I'm, I'm showing them, clearly showing them where their AOHOs are. And then it's up to them. They can either implement them themselves or they can hire me and my team to do the implementation for them and with them. And typically, they hire us to do the implementation and work with their team. 
and we play well with others. We integrate like, like really well with existing teams. So that leads to the next phase. You know, the phase two is the, the initial build out of their systems, the implementation rollout, build out other systems. And then that's a bigger engagement but a, sh- a shorter term engagement. And then after there, after we got the systems built and we're usually seeing some results and that's, that's about a three month period to get the systems built and see results rolling in. Then from beyond there, then we go into the uh, phase three, which is the optimization and the growth of these systems where these systems that we build, they're like a picture, like a water spigot where once they're working, you can open up the water spigot as big as you want and have you know, a flow of as many leads as you want coming out that you can operationally handle. That's how the systems are built. I used to be a manufacturing engineer and I built manufacturing lines and big on systems and stuff like that. So it's like everything we do is the scalable systems where they can increase their, their traffic, which increases their flow. Because once you're hitting a positive ROI, and this is what we're showing. You know, I had one client you know, selling a $6,000 product when I, <laughs> when I did the analysis with them and it was AOHOs, uh, I showed them how much it was costing them to make a sale. It's costing them almost 4,000 bucks to make a $6,000 sale nearly flip. I showed him how much it cost him for a phone call. He almost had a heart attack because they were just chasing traffic. And there's not much traffic you can buy that's going to be profitable if a conversion stinks. And so set them on the right track where now the conversion costs, you know, they can get those down to a few hundred bucks, which now it's like, okay, so if you're selling a $6,000 product and it costs you a few hundred bucks to get a client, question that they ask is like, well, how much money can I spend on traffic? It's like, how much money will, will Google and Facebook and every other traffic source allow me to spend? With any small business, it's the same thing, provided you know, you've, you've got the operational back end to support it. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, when you're getting leads, you're spending a buck in advertising, and that buck is coming back and bringing a friend or several friends with it. You know, if you've got you know, five to one, 10 to one ROI, some campaigns I've, you know, I've personally done, it's, you know, I've got a, I was trying to figure that out, you know, I think I got a 15,000% ROI on, on one campaign that, that I've been running. And so the question for clients is like, once they've got a positive ROI, it's how much money can I spend? You know, meaning it's like their vision starts coming to life. It's like, oh, so I spent 500 bucks and I made 20,000 or 50,000 or 100,000. Can I spend $1,000? Can I spend 2,000? Can I spend $50,000? Meaning they're going to have that, that multiple at the back end of it. So what, what I found is, is it's typically once they understand where their opportunities are, it takes about three months of focused work and effort to build the uh, systems out. It depends on the business and how complex you know, things are. And then from there, we just look at, okay, well, how can we grow and scale? The, you know, let's grow and scale this even more to take your business on a much bigger level. And this is where you know, his clients have done, you know, working with one guy, you know, his business was doing about $700,000 when we started working together. He's now at a million dollars. But what we've been doing is we've been structuring and growing everything to grow him to a, about a $100 million company because he's in a, a big growing space where he can do that. But it's like, you know, before we can start duplicating this and, and opening up multiple locations, whether it's franchising or, or private franchising, open up new locations, it's like, we've got to have your lead generation, lead conversion in place. We've got to have your client fulfillment in place. And so now we've got this set up turnkey running in one geographical location. We've got all the systems hammered out. We know our return, our ROI on things. All our systems are working and it's not taking a lot of your time. So now let's open up location two, three, four, five, you know, 50, 60, 70. And this is the, the good side of it is when you do things like this, Tom, you can scale and it doesn't take you doesn't take you a whole lot more time. I've got a lot of clients that would love to double their sales, but what they hear in their mind when they hear double your sales, they think, do you realize how much work and how much time I put in to get to where I am? I don't want to double that, that time. Mm-hmm. Anymore. I'm going to go crazy. And so they, they just shut it down. So instead of that, it's like, well, no, fundamentals, back to fundamentals. You know, if we build out your grease slide and then we plug in as much traffic as we can into that grease slide. Here's a very important differentiator. When you're looking at traffic, people are looking at Facebook campaigns or YouTube or Google or you know, Display Network or Twitter or social, whatever. None of those places have ever bought anything from anybody I know. Like Google has never purchased anything from me. Facebook has never purchased anything from my clients. People purchase things. You know, the actual source itself doesn't purchase things. The source itself is a medium to get in front of the people. And when you've got the grease slide built out for the person that you want to have, then it makes the whole journey very, very fun and very smooth, very easy for them. Now what we're doing is we're just looking to hook a ladder up to the slide to get people on the top of the slide. 
And as they're climbing the slide, we put a jetpack on the back and let them give them a you know, gentle push down the slide. But if you look at you know, traffic, it's just a ladder to get to the top of the grease slide. So, so now it's like we have one traffic source working, you know, and we hammer our systems out on one traffic source. We get that working. You know, so now we, we're able to take a person from a one-second engagement to being on the grease slide and just flowing down that slide and just having the time of their life and become a customer. We now then take that, it's because it's the same flow, and we duplicate it on as many different traffic sources as humanly possible. Because all that traffic source is doing is just generating the initial one second to three seconds, maybe 30 seconds. The grease slide, you know, like handles all the rest of it. So when you see it from this perspective and clients' mm-hmm. light bulb starts going on, it's like, okay, well, we're going to build a system. We're going to build our grease slide. And then we're going to plug our lead generation modules in that act as ladders. And then we can have as many people as humanly possible going into this, provided that we've got the right ROI. We've got the right return on investment coming back in. So then it becomes very easy for clients managing traffic sources because then they just, they just look at the, the measurement on them and say, okay, well, uh, Facebook is great. Google's great. Direct mail is great. TV you know, didn't work. Radio is, is, is killing it. Newspaper is good. Magazines aren't good. You know, Twitter's good, social's good. You know, it just becomes so much easier. And especially if you're dealing with vendors, it becomes easy. It's like, you know, they're mm-hmm. looking to redo a contract and say, well, I can't afford this. Yeah, I like this. So this is interesting. So I, I definitely appreciate this insight. I like the idea of areas of highest opportunities. I think that's obviously only applicable for certain people, but but anybody who's like business consulting wise, I think it's a it's a great strategy. And Tom, with because I've done a lot of work with uh, e-commerce companies as well too, and every e-commerce company has got their, their AOHOs as well. They just, the grease slide is different. You know, they all have AOHOs. They all need a grease slide, but just how you build the, what AOHOs look like is different and how they build their grease slides is different. Gotcha. Cool. Well, Chris, um, we're at the top of the hour. I just want to say thank you for being on the show. Where can people find you online and learn more about what you teach and, and everything you do? Sure. So they can find me online at chrisgoegan.com. That's C-H-R-I-S, Goegan, G-O-E-G-A-N.com. I just launched a, a new program. Is it okay if I, if I mention this? Yeah, of course. Okay. So it's what I did is from all the work I've done with consulting clients, I've taken that and made it into a uh, 12-week program. I had a very good friend come to me. He's like, he had no business for a number of weeks, which should have been his busiest time. He's like, I need help. Smart guy. I've been in business for a while. So I, I spent um, a few afternoons together with him. And over the course of the next six weeks, he'd pulled in $135,000 in sales off of a $500 ad spend. This is to no list, 100% cold traffic. And then he was self-sufficient you know, after this. And so the light bulb went off. It's like, you know, there, there are other people out there like my friend Ken. It's like, why not? Why can't I offer something like this to them? And so, so I put together this program based off of everything that I've seen from work as a consulting. I've been working with many companies and so okay, well, I want to take that same thing and make it something available to uh, small business owners, you know, that, that can't afford to, you know, hire me for, uh, for consulting. So put together a, a 12 week program and you can find that on the, uh, on the website, some information about that. Perfect. Chris, thank you so much for being on the trenches, man. It was a blast having you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to In the Trenches. Your creative work doesn't stop here. Join the resistance, the small but growing army of entrepreneurs and artists putting a dent in the world at www.tommorkis.com. Never fight alone. Join the resistance. <laughs>